Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to everyone that's watching. Uh, many of you are watching online. Some of you are on the Zoom call with us. Let's go back to this uh, concept of the branch. Let's go back to the Zechariah passage. It says, Thus says Adonai Sevaot, Lord of hosts, I will, uh, if you walk in my ways and keep my charge, then you, you will judge my house and watch over my courts. Speaking of the temple, my house is the temple, the courts is the, the courts to the temple. And I will give you a place to walk among these standing. Listen well, Joshua, Kohen Gadol, high priest, both you and your companions seated before you, because they are men who are assigned. Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I've laid before Joshua is one stone with seven facets. Watch now, verse nine. For behold, the stone that I've laid before Joshua, upon the stone are seven eyes. How many eyes? Seven eyes. Seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts. I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite their neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. Well, Israel is called the vine and Israel is called the fig tree. Now, what are these seven eyes? <laughs> the seven eyes are mysterious because it says, upon this stone laid before Joshua is seven eyes. Now, it says in chapter four, and the angel who talked with me, this is still Zechariah, he talked with me, came back and waked me as a man who had been waking out of his sleep and said to me, what do you see? So I said, I'm looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on, t on top of it. And on the seven lamps, uh, with seven pipes to the seven lamps, he says, two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl and the other at the left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, what are these, my Lord? And the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. And he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Notice that, by my spirit. Remember, the same spirit that was resting upon the Messiah, the spirit of the Lord God must perform this. Now, this is given to uh, Zechariah and Zerubbabel is the governor there in Jerusalem. He's the governor. It's like Ezra is the priest. Okay, so it says, not by my, nor by power, by my spirit, says the Lord. Everybody quotes that, but they never quote where it comes from. It says in verse seven, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone. Uh, other versions would say headstone or cornerstone. He says, and you shall bring forth the capstone, which shouts of grace, grace to it. So they're going to bring this stone. Remember, the stone was laid before Joshua, the high priest. And then they says they bring out this stone. <laughs> Remember, the stone had seven eyes on it. And they're going to bring out this chief cornerstone, this headstone, and they're going to cry grace, grace to it. <laughs> Once we find out who the stone is, then we can figure out... <laughs> what the connection is. He says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven, seven what? These seven rejoice to see these seven eyes. Rejoice to see. The plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. What are these seven? These seven are the eyes of the Lord. Wow. Which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Did you just catch that? Yep. So the seven eyes. Oh, this is so powerful. Yeah. I'm about to lose my mind right now. I know. The seven <laughs> eyes are the eyes of the Lord that scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Now, I need to stop here for a second and go to another passage. Chronicles. And I'm going to go over to verse number nine as one of my verses here. 16.9. For the eyes of the Lord run where? To and fro throughout the whole earth 
to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. So these seven eyes are the eyes of the Lord running to and fro throughout the whole earth. Okay. So the question is, what is this strange reference to the eyes of the Lord? Because we know God is not a man that he should lie. And God is not a man that he has the form of a man. Although metaphorically, we have anthropomorphic descriptions of God, him having a mouth, him having eyes, him having ears, him having a nose, him having a hand, him having a finger. God is a spirit. And those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, Yeshua was the word made flesh. So Yeshua has eyes and ears and mouth and nose. But this is not referring to Yeshua. This is referring to the God of the whole earth whose, whose eyes see, omnisciently see, because eyes are symbolic of wisdom, insight, and knowledge. So the eyes of the Lord refers to the omniscience of God. How is God omniscient? Well, we're going to find out a little bit more. Let's actually go to... And put the eyes of the Lord. I love this. Noah found grace in the what? <laughs> the eyes of the Lord. Look at Proverbs 15.3. The eyes of the Lord are where? In every place. Proverbs 15.3. Keeping watch on the evil and the good, including all those that break into Zoom meetings. <laughs> Did you catch that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. All the ways of man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Every, man, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. Look at this one. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. What do the eyes of the Lord do? They preserve knowledge. Let's take this to the book of Revelation. And let's see how John is taking the words of the prophets and from Solomon and is relating these concepts. First of all, did you see Yeshua's eyes? To the church of Thyatira, these things says the Son of God, whose eyes are like a what? Flame. Flame of fire. Right? His eyes are like a flame of fire. Okay. Now, yes. if you go to... Revelation chapter 5, it says, and we read this in previous weeks, and I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders, a lamb as, it had, as though it had been slain, having what? Seven the horns eyes. and seven eyes, seven which are, eyes. The seven are the seven spirits of God, spirit watch this, of God. sent out into all the sent earth. All the or earth. as the other version said, go to and fro throughout the whole earth. So the eyes of the Lord refer to the ministries of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So if you were to look at this in other translations, you'll see that the seven spirits of God, some translators would call it the sevenfold spirit of God because they understand there's only one Holy Spirit, but because of Isaiah 11 too, he has seven titles. But do you guys feel like you had a, a deeper revelation on, how about the branch? When we talked about the branch, had you ever seen those prophecies about the branch? You know, the Orthodox Jews have a prayer they pray every single day, sometimes three times a day, that prays for God to bring the branch, the Messiah. Oh. So they're actually pr praying for these prophecies to come to pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, I didn't know that they referred to though as the branch. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. In Hebrew, the term for branch there is samach. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a very popular uh, topic among Orthodox Jews to talk about the Messiah as the branch. Because the idea is if Israel is a family tree, mm -hmm. and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the roots, and we're all branches, just like Yeshua described in John chapter 15 about the vine and how Rev Romans 11 talks about the olive tree of Israel. Then we see how even the menorah, the menorah is a tree of life. It is the olive tree, right? Yeah, was, I think that was the most eye-awakening thing to oh, me. Good. Whole yes. Thing. Yes. yes, yes, it was. It was just really. Okay. The menorah, the two trees. So, so I have to show you one other thing. Do you remember how I said that on that stone, that cornerstone, there would be seven eyes drawn. 
are, are inscribed. Uh -huh. And then we found out in the next chapter that the seven eyes were referring to the seven lamps of fire on the right. menorah because the seven lamps are the seven eyes. Right. You know, Zechariah chapter three and four, but also in, set, in Revelation four and five. And uh, we saw that it's all referring to the spirits of God, like in Revelation wow, 3. Wow, this is awesome. This is yeah, so that awesome. Was, that was really yes. awesome. So really? let me actually show you where I believe that first century believers in the Messiah actually did this in their local synagogue. We shared it before, but it's now going to all come together. If the menorah is a symbol for Israel, and it was considered to be a symbol for the local synagogues that were in Asia Minor and throughout the circulation of both the missionary work of Paul and, and Peter and, and uh, John as they're circulating their letters, we actually see that this is also something that we found to be the Jerusalem seal. So remember, we talked about this Jerusalem seal. Yes. Okay. So here we have the seven churches mentioned in Revelation 1-4. Um, the part I want to show you is, again, here's the menorah. It's been rebuilt in Israel for the next temple. But notice the shape of the lamps. They are the same shape as an eye. And when Yeshua oh, wow. is staring at the seven churches, which are seven menorahs, his eyes are burning like a flame of fire because the lamps he's looking at are fire. And whenever you see the pupil of the eye, you can actually see a reflection of what the person's staring at. So the eyes of fire represent the fire burning in those seven churches. Now, here's the amazing thing. Do you remember what it says that the seven eyes will be on this stone? Well, the early believers created a seal that's now called the, Mess the Messianic Seal of the Jerusalem Church. And you can see here this drawing of a menorah on these clay vessels. And... Hmm triangular base of the menorah intersects with the triangular tail of the fish to create the full image of what many thought was only a fish drawn in the ground. Well, true messianic believers would actually draw a fish intersecting a menorah because the seven lamps on the menorah represent the seven eyes. Could it be that what Zechariah saw was the inscription of a menorah written on stone as you see here? which is part of the headstone, the chief cornerstone, which we know is Yeshua, because they cry grace, grace to it. So could it be that this menorah is the very menorah that you see in chapter four of Zechariah, which are the seven lamps, which are the seven eyes, which represent the menorah as a picture of Israel, who is to be the light to the nations. Hmm. You're to be like a lamp set upon a lampstand. You don't hide it, right? You set it upon a lampstand. What do these lamps set upon? A lampstand, a menorah. You should hmm. hide her under a bushel, right? And when he says your lights in the world, and he says a city upon a a a, 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 a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. You know, when you come into Jerusalem from from Tel Aviv, you see this huge hill of a city. You can't hide Jerusalem anywhere. It's just, it's just, it's in your face. You're driving into Jerusalem. You see this big mountain of houses and the temple would have been on the top. And so the temple mount would have had these big menorahs burning bright so that Israel could be a light to the nations. And all nations would come to Jerusalem and bring their offerings like the Queen of Sheba did with, with Solomon and come bring their offerings and recognize his wisdom and the wisdom of his people. And so you can actually see where there's a possibility of what, he was seeing was the seven lamps of fire, which are the seven eyes, because it says seven eyes were inscribed upon this stone that becomes the chief cornerstone, which is the Messiah. He is our chief cornerstone, amen? Yes. Could it be those seven eyes, which are the sevenfold spiritual anointing of the Holy Spirit upon the Messiah, is represented by drawing the menorah on a stone that represents Yeshua as the rock. For upon this rock, I will build wow. my congregation. So wow. with me. Yes. Watch this. Do you know what this vessel is for with this menorah? Do you see what it says in, 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 here wow. in English underneath the Aramaic? It says oil of the spirit because it's anointing oil. Wow. So they put the anointing wow. on the vessel where they put the menorah that had to use oil to light the lamps. 
And if the stone represents the stone wow. who is the cornerstone Messiah, then he's the anointed one. Do you remember when Jacob had a revelation of the angels ascending and descending upon, upon this rock? Mm -hmm. It says that, that he put oil upon this stone and said, this is the pillar of the house of God. <laughs> so upon this rock, I will build my house. Upon this rock, I'll build my church, my community, my ecclesia. So all of this symbolism, the early believers understood this prophecy and said, we represent the remnant of Israel that should be a light to the nations as Zechariah promised that we would be illuminated in the last days and they would be fishers of men, Yeshua said. So they went out as the light of the world to be fishers of men. And that's why we have this seal. And it's still the Messianic Jewish seal to this very day for Israelis and Jews all around the world who have come to faith in Messiah. Is that not powerful or what? Yeah, that's awesome. It is awesome. Here's a, a, a typical synagogue. It is the a synagogue in Capernaum where Yeshua taught. And even though it had been rebuilt after the first one destroyed with the Greco-Roman world, the images on it, um, when you actually go to the actual synagogue, you actually see some of the ancient artwork of the Star of David, and you see menorahs, and you see all these amazing pictures uh, that probably relate to what how these synagogues viewed themselves as Zachariah. I've been there. The build. Yeah, I've you've been, been there. That's in Capernaum. Yeah. yeah. Kefer Nahum, as we'd say in Hebrew, Capernaum, where the wait, where St. Peter's house is. Yes. Found the fishing supplies in this house they believe it's saint peter's uh fishing house that he had all his fishermen staying with him or housing all the fishing equipment yep. let's close out in prayer father i thank you Avino volcano our father our king for blessing us at our synagogue and the students of destiny church that are part of the bible college members of different congregations that are joining on and we thank you for protecting us even on zoom from those that maybe shouldn't be a part of Zoom call that, that will heighten our security, God. And we just thank you, Lord God, the right people are finally <laughs> on the Lord. call. And those that are watching on Facebook, they are able to be a part of this. And we just pray a blessing over everyone. Number six, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless and keep you this week. May he shine his face upon you, be gracious to you with his divine Amen. favor. May he lift up his countenance upon you, for he is the glory and lifter of your heads. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Sar Shalom, Yeshua the Messiah. In his name we pray, Bishim Yeshua. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen.